Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day five of the holiday card series. We're just speeding right through. Um, today I'm going to be using the combo number two. Isn't that so cute? I've um, I decided since I shared that video this morning uh, using Distress Three Inkers for watercoloring and I was I love this so much, I can't stand it. Um, I think I'm gonna do some more Distress Three Inker watercoloring. And I'm gonna use this dye from Reverse Confetti and color different little, like they're gonna be really small sections, but color different little sections with the reinkers. So that is the plan for today. Now I did have to deviate from this list of the Tim Holtz Distress Colors for this combo. I realized that my salvaged patina is MIA. I have no idea where it went. So we're gonna swap it out with a little tumble glass just to make it a little different. We just needed a kind of a, a lighter blue and salvaged patina is a nice color that would work for it. But since I don't have that one, I'm just gonna swap it out with tumble glass. So if you have any of the, you know, you wanna use one of these combos and you don't have every single color like don't despair, swap it out for something you do have and, you know, kind of improvise. That looks about right. I'm gonna just do it like that. I think that'll hold that in place enough. A little encouragement. Okay, so this is some watercolor paper that I'm gonna have right behind it. So I'm going to take a pencil, all right, and I'm just going to very lightly outline each one of these sections. It's not a huge deal if I get a little pencil on my card front because I can always erase it. Okay. And I did get a little pencil on my card front, but you can kind of see that right there. All right, and now for the colors. It's gonna be such a fun color palette. Got five different colors to use, crazy. I've got tumbled glass, peeled paint, mustard seed, candied apple, and peacock feathers. I don't want those lines, cause I don't know if you can see them, but the lines are pretty dark right now. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just go over this really lightly with my eraser. And it's gonna get rid of most of the really dark lines. So now it's much lighter, you see that? Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the painting. All right, so I'm adding some water in this bottom area. And the paint will only go where I have the water. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that peacock feathers and I'm just gonna start adding in I want to do a version that's just peacock feathers and um, tumbled glass. So let's take this off the board. We're going to do another version. I'm just kind of on a roll here. I'm not going to trace the whole entire tree this time. 
I'm just going to get the main corners. And then I kind of have an idea of where we're going and we're going to do the whole thing all in one piece. Okay, let's see how, oh, okay, there we go. I love that. I love that even more. I think just uh, narrowing it down to just a few colors and having a larger area is the way to go. Okay, we could probably get some really good colors if we did tumbled glass, candied apple, and mustard seed. So let's try, let's try those. Okay, it's looking a little crazy at the moment, but it might not be so bad. Yeah, it's not that bad once you put it on. I think we could leave it just like this. Let's leave it. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with these two. I don't know about that one. It's looking, uh, it's not my favorite. So I think I'm gonna just do these two right here. But just to, I'm gonna, I don't know. We might be able to use some of this paint, right? just because I'm curious and we're doing this live. If it doesn't work out, I will totally edit it out of the edited version. But let me take my distress, distress sprayer, lots of water, and watercolor paper face down into it, and then lift up. Well, it's interesting. Like I said, that candied apple is really intense. Let's see. Oh, okay. Okay. Maybe we can get it moving a little. Let me add a little, a little squiggle. Okay. It's reminding me of a murder scene. <laughs> Not that I've seen murder, lots of murder scenes, but. Okay, I no longer see mur murder scene. I now see summer tie-dye <laughs> or like summer night. Could be interesting. Is this our third card? It could be interesting. Or if I go this way, get a little more blue. I could have it come down all the way. That could be kind of pretty. I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer and just cut these down a little bit around. Well, this one, I'm, I wanted to use like a completely different section. But these other two, I'm just gonna go around and cut a little bit off the edge all around so that it doesn't show when I adhere it. I'm going to go adhere these 
to the front of the card and then I can do all the foam for the cutout on the front. Here's two. And then this third one, I've got to figure out exactly what section I want to use. I'm thinking right there, because I kind of want to avoid this dark spot. So maybe like right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get those corners again. Why am I using exacto knife? Use scissors, Christina. Scissors are safer. Okay. I'm just giving it a really wide berth around it. Okay. Okay. Now we need to do acetate on all of these before we do anything. We're going to use some honeybee uh, precision glue. All right. A little glue. Now I'll be very careful as I place it down this time. All right. And now we build the shakers. And the easiest way to do that, of course, with our big mama roll, right? You just pull off a ton of the foam. And then you fold it in half. Because you need um, like a double layer of foam, a double depth of foam so that the shaker bits can move freely. And then you can just come right in and start putting it on the shaker area. You just wanna make sure that when you put the foam on that it really butts up against the other piece so that it really will trap the shaker bits inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this red one done. I'm going to just peel off these areas and we're gonna get the shaker bits ready and then we'll just put that right on top. So I'll just grab a bunch of these. but I do have some larger iridescent ones right next to it, which I think would be kind of fun. We'll just do kind of mix of both. All righty here. Let's just hope this gets semi in the area where I want it. <laughs> okay. I'm going around that, all that foam area, making sure it's all pressed in. I'm gonna turn over. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I like the mix of the clear and the iridescent. That's fun. I'm gonna take regular adhesive and put it on the back of the watercolor in the center. And then I'm gonna use my Misty and open it up. Take out the foam pad and I'm gonna place this inside. I'm gonna remove the backing paper on the rest of the foam. I'm gonna keep that directly into the corner. And then I can line up my card right in that corner as well. And then press down. And then it's on the front of the card. Yay! Okay. So the other shaker bits are gonna be Kind of assembled the same way shake other shaker cards so let's just go ahead and do that or maybe just the iridescent this time let's try just the iridescent this time in fact that might be too much just spread it around all right and then we get it lined up in that corner again
Oh yeah, that's pretty. We'll do a mix of the Crystal Del Reese five millimeter and eight millimeter. Those are my two favorites. Love them. Because they kind of have a little bit of a green cast to them, which I think is going to lend itself well to this color combo. And just because I have these out, maybe I'll go ahead and throw a couple of these in too. Okay. All right, so that was the same as the stamp spring green mix, I think. Flattening this out, we don't want any really thick spots. Getting that right in the corner. And then pressing that down. <gasps> oh yeah, that was a good mix. <gasps> I love that. I think this is my favorite of all the ones we've done so far. Okay, so for the greeting for these uh, cards, I had a plan and it involves a little bit of stamp surgery. This is the Christmas word mix from Simon, but I really only want like the season's greetings. And I thought I would just do it in black and put it right on top. So it's actually, the way this is set up is it's one, well, two big stamps, but I really only want the one. So let me cut it apart. And the thing that's kind of fun about this stamp set is that it actually, like, you can die cut them all at the same time. But I find myself wanting to just stamp them individually more than anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Why not? I'm going to put some foam adhesive on the back of each one of these circles. And I'm just putting it right there. Season's greetings. They're very, very simple cards, but I love how clean they are. You know? Let's get some of those sequins moved around inside. Oh, I love how they turned out. So here are my three cards for tonight. I struggled throughout the entire live stream, but in the end, I love how these turned out. We've got, you know, more of a traditional Christmas tree color, something completely different and something a little bit more modern. I think they all three look fantastic. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys on Friday for day six of the holiday card series. Mm -hmm.